Hello, my name is Ted Hawkins and I'm from the Edge Software Consultancy and today I want to show you how we can use uh, BioRails and Morphit to execute an oncology assay. So I'm going to select my home folder, create a new experiment and select the method that I want to run. This is tumor volume experiment. It's a unique, unique experiment ID. I'm going to save that. So this has created a new experiment based on, on a templated protocol. The desktop will update with the experiments folder and present me with all the contents of the experiments folder including the virals, including the Morphit binder. So we can open the Morphit binder and execute the experiment. So Morphit is the multidimensional spreadsheet. Uh, this is based uh, on a template and as it opens it will connect and we can run the experiment. As the binder opens, um, there's a double check to ensure that we've got the correct task mapping. Uh, essentially this means that the binder has been mapped correctly for each of the steps in the experiment onto each of the pages. So that's fine. And we've got the option of downloading any data we may have previously entered in the experiment. So let's set up the protocol. Okay, so I've used, uh, selected a compound the route of administration, the species and strain, and sex. All these dictionaries are populated from BioRails, which we've already connected to. So that's the protocol filled out. We can mark that as completed and we can now set up our treatment groups. So by default we have true treatment groups in there already and we're going to add um, four more groups for the test. So we'll select the role as you can see as we select each role the compound associated with that role is entered in the substances uh, column. Dose, okay, so we can see that the test groups have eight animals in them each, the vehicle has ten, and the reference compound is just six. This is represented by the pivoted animals uh, the sh if the animals had been assigned, we'd see their code number here. So as we know how many animals we need, we can now submit our animal order. So we can calculate that from the sum of the uh, animals required in the treatment groups plus a fudge factor, perhaps extra 20%. We have some default parameters in here for the animals and we can fill this out and post it. So what this has done is uploaded the, the values in this table into a task in BioRails which I can then reassign to uh, the animal welfare people. Now when the animals are ready they will uh, update their database and I can extract that data out of their database and bring it into this binder. The animal codes come through their weights and we're automatically assigning the animals to the groups randomly. Now we can review the weight distribution of the animals across each of the groups and if we don't like it we can re-randomize. Okay, so when we're happy uh, we can set up our study schedule. So by default we've set up 10 dates and we could add a new date or remove dates and so on. Now this can be done at any point during the experiment so we may have just started off with day 14 and every time we make an observation simply add the date. 
Now this binder has been designed for manual data input so the, uh, the scientists will measure the tumour and enter the body weight. So that's for every animal and every time point, every uh, observation day. Because we have some data already. And certainly this data could have been imported from an external file or even from a database. So with the data entered we could look at the, the charts and these charts are dynamic, they've been automatically generated from the data that's been put in. If we'd added another treatment day then this this column, there'd be an extra column of data, extra groups and so on would all be uh, automatically updated. So this is the change in tumour volume and this is the change in body weight. And if we like it, we can print this to Birels. And this has just printed the page to the Birels experiment. Okay, so we can take that data and we're going to uh, run um, a two-way anavar over the data. So this is looking at the tumour volume against the factors of dose and day. And we can create a snapshot of that analysis in the new sheet. If we go back to the statistics, we can do the same for body weight, dose and day. So we now have our data. The final stage is to post the results, the endpoint data. So in this case we'll be posting for each of the treatment groups, for each of the test groups, um, the average and standard error of the uh, tumour volume and body weight. So this is populating all the tasks in the Birels experiment. Okay, so the results have been uploaded. Uh, we have the option as well as saving this binder into the experiment. And this will update the, the original version of the binder that we, pre we downloaded before we started the experiment. We can do this any number of times. And of course, we can work with the Morphic binder offline. So the band has been uploaded, uh, we can now close it because we don't need a local copy. So here's the experiment. Uh, we can preview, look at the results. So this is the data that's gone back into Birels. And of course we can open the experiment in Birels. So this is the experiment in document view. We're just editing the content. And we can see the data. Of course anything we printed. The final stage is to be add our conclusions and to complete the experiments to render it read only. Once completed we could choose to publish the experiment as well as electronically sign it. So that's the tumour volume experiment complete. If you'd like more information please contact us on the software consultancy and uh, I look forward to hearing from you.